this video I'm going to share with you my photography settings for the Fujifilm system. Simple, easy and effective. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. To every new face, every single new subscriber, I'm Florian. Great to have you in the channel. Hope you're all guys doing fantastic. As mentioned already, today we're going to talk about my Fujifilm photography settings to get the best quality out of your camera. And those settings are generic settings, so you can copy them to any single Fujifilm camera. Of course, there might be slightly differences in newer version or newer models to the older cameras, such as like the older cameras operate at a certain ISO, which they turned down with the newer models. However, those settings are generic settings and you can use them on any single camera of the Fujifilm brand. So we're gonna break it down in exposure, then autofocus and then we also break it down in RAW and JPEG settings and then we talk through, I give you a breakdown why I use certain settings, how they work for me and then perhaps some of those settings might work for you as well and without further saying let's dive into it. Okay guys so first we need to decide what we're actually gonna do. Are we shooting aperture priority, shutter speed priority or are we actually choosing or shooting completely manually? So 99% of the time, I personally shoot completely manually to have full control over the aperture, my ISO and my shutter speed. Of course, there have been occasions when I shot aperture priority mode, such as like when I shot the wedding. However, 99% I do shoot manually to have full control over my settings, over my exposure. So let's jump into the menu, come quickly over to autofocus settings. So autofocus mode depends on the subject you shoot. You can either choose single point focus, zone focus, white tracking, or you could choose all. However, 85% of the time for the subject you shoot, you are probably good with single point focus. Zone focus, I probably would use if I got something fast moving around. Or white tracking, I would do probably if I shoot a runner or anything similar, everything what has to do with speed or moving subjects, then I would choose a zone or white tracking mode. However, we stick to single point focus. 85% of my work is still images, so I don't need a zone or white tracking and the single point autofocus will do fine. The custom settings, you can choose different presets from a Fujifilm for your autofocus system. The only time when I change the custom settings is when I actually shoot video and I got a separate video to this and I can leave a link down in the comments so you can check it out later. And my number of focus points is also 425 to use the most autofocus points available that I got enough flexibility towards this. So let's dive into the menu now. We start off with the JPEGs, talk you through my JPEG settings and then after we're gonna talk about the raw settings as well. So this is why you're here guys. Let's talk about my photography settings. We're starting off with the JPEGs and usually when I shoot JPEGs with the Fujifilm system, because the colors are great and the JPEGs are fantastic, which coming straight out of camera, usually I shoot presets, which you can download from a Fujifilm X weekly app. They're giving you all information how to program every single settings to get a certain specific film look, which is absolutely fantastic. This is the majority of time when I shoot JPEG and download the settings, program my JPEG settings into the camera and I got the ready to use film look image straight out of camera. However, if I decide to shoot JPEGs, my JPEG settings are pretty straightforward and simple. So my format is large 3x2 to get the best, biggest quality file possible. You could turn it down to a large 16x9, a large 1x1 or a medium or a small version as well. However, if you want to get the best quality towards your JPEG, you should always shoot a large 3x2 format, gives you the biggest quality possible. Also, we need to define what sort of JPEG format we want to shoot, a JPEG fine or a normal JPEG. The difference between a fine and normal JPEGs is that the fine JPEG is a less compressed JPEG compared to the fine JPEG. 
you get a bigger, higher quality file with less noise and the file format or the file itself is bigger as well. It's better for printing and not saying that the normal JPEG is not good at all. It is just a more compressed image, a smaller file size and potentially got a bit more noise in it. So usually I choose a fine JPEG to get the best quality possible out of the camera. Then we're coming up to our dynamic range. This slightly differences to every single subject I shoot. It also depends on your ISO, which ISO you use. The JPEG um, file format with the dynamic range of 100 as an example shoots the ISO between ISO 160 up to 320. So you need to keep this in mind that your dynamic range always need to match your ISO. As an example, dynamic range 100 reaches uh, ISO from 160 up to 320. If you wanted to go to dynamic range 200, you need to bump up your ISO at least above 320 up to 640. Whilst dynamic range 200 is one stop of recovery, and if you wanted to bump up your dynamic range to 400, you need to go at least to ISO 640 to reach your capacity of recording a dynamic range of 400, which would be two stops of recovery. I do leave my dynamic range set to auto. For the simple reason, I do change my ISO regularly. Depends on a subject I shoot, depends on the lighting. I do change my ISO as I need it, as I think it's right. And my dynamic range will automatically set the right dynamic range to the ISO to get the best possible quality. Then coming over to the white balance, usually the white balance is set to auto as well. As in average, let's say you would shoot in a studio, you got a consistent light, you could set your Kelvin, you could set it to a different preset, such as like a sunny day preset, or overcast preset, tungsten, etc. However, on average, I leave my white balance set to auto as well because I think the camera matches the white balance quite nicely to the scene I shoot. And on average, if you wanted to do slightly adjustments, you could do this in post and probably I think it is easier to do this in post for the simple reason you got more flexibility. I don't want to burn a certain look into an image if I might go for a different image. So on average, I leave the white balance to auto. The camera will match the white balance pretty good towards the whites in the image. And if I wanted to turn it into orange, yellow, or give it a bit warmer tone, I do this in post. And it's also a setting I don't need to worry too much about it. Sometimes I do set it to Kelvin if I need to. However, on average, I leave it white balance set to auto. Your film simulation, that's entirely up to you if you're gonna shoot a standard picture profile or set a film simulation such as like A-Cross. However, you need to keep in mind if you set your picture profile to A-Cross and you shoot black and white within a camera, you can't convert it back into color. So keep this in mind guys, if you want a color version and you might wanna convert it later on, in post to black and white, always shoot a color version and convert the color version into black and white. You can't convert the black and white image back into color. So my color profile picture is always set to standard and I do the adjustments I would like to have or a certain color grade in post. And I can show you this in a different video as well. Let me know in the comments if this is of interest to you guys. So, and then basically my Highlight tones, usually if I shoot JPEG, I do set down by usually around minus one, maybe minus two, depends on how bright it is outside, because I try to avoid to clip the highlights too much. And then my shadows, I usually bring up by 0 0.5 or plus one, because I rather add a bit more contrast into the image in post as well and try to get more details out of the shadows. And that's pretty much my JPEG settings. As I mentioned, I do like to shoot the film simulation recipes from Fujifilm and I got a different video about this as well. 
but those are basically my main settings when shooting JPEG. And now we're gonna jump into the raw settings and you're gonna be surprised how easy they are, but they're easy and effective. So here we go, now we're in a raw settings and they are actually very similar to my JPEG settings as well. So we're starting off with the raw format, so we need to choose our raw for format, which raw format we would like to shoot. In this case, raw, which reads out the highest, biggest quality and file possible out of your camera. But then also you can decide if you would like to shoot raw and JPEG at the same time. In certain occasions I do this when I know like I would like to have a quick turnaround, let's say I would shoot my family or I see my nieces or whatever, then probably I would shoot raw and fine JPEG at the same time raw image to have later more space to edit the images in post, but also a fine JPEG at the same time to have a JPEG ready straight to use or send it to my brother or anything similar. So usually it really depends on what you want to shoot and the situation. As I mentioned already, if I go out and shoot a portrait shoot or whatever, or similar or landscapes, then probably I would shoot just a normal raw file. And if I need a quick turnaround or would like to show my parents images or would like to send them over to families, then I probably shoot raw and JPEG at the same time, a fine JPEG to get the biggest quality. In this case, if I would do so, my format is again large 3x2 to get the biggest, best and highest quality possible guys to get the most out of the image. But then if we're just shooting raw, my settings such as like highlight tones, shadow tones are all set to zero because you record already or you shoot the highest possible quality out of your sensor. So there's no difference if you will turn those settings on or not. It does not make any difference. You record already raw or you shoot the raw image and you get the biggest, best possible quality out of your sensor and every single other adjustment you will do later in post. That's the reason why you shoot raw to have the flexibility later in post. My dynamic range settings are set to auto again. Just for the simple reason, I have one setting less to worry about. It will, or the dynamic range auto setting will match the dynamic range towards my shutter speed. But also on the other hand side, you record a raw image, you got already way more details and information in your raw image than with the JPEG anyway. And the auto white balance or white balance in general speaking is again, set to auto because I do appreciate how good the white balance comes out of a Fujifilm camera or system. And as you can see guys, that's pretty much my raw file settings. Most of them are set to zero or to standard automatic. And yeah, they're pretty simple, straightforward, but personally speaking, I found they gave me the best quality out of it and also the most flexibility out of those files as well. So guys, as you can see, very simple, easy settings, which I personally use, which I found is giving me the best possible quality out of a camera, but also the most flexibility towards after processing in post in Capture One. Raw is raw, you record the best, highest possible quality, and you get the biggest file sizes as well. But JPEGs are also great and I do prefer to shoot the Fujifilm recipes when shooting JPEG because to, they're giving me this type of old school film look, which I quite like. And I can leave a link down for the app in the comments as well to give you an idea or to try them out. They're absolutely fantastic. And it's quite a lot of fun to shoot with them because you see your images in a completely different picture after you took image. And with that said guys, very simple, easy to tutorial settings. And if you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see similar things or if you would like to see different things. Let me know your opinion and what you thought about this video today. And with that said guys, like, comment and subscribe. And I'm gonna see you my friend very soon in another video. Cheers guys.